Exotic. What was it? Uma Thurman also has that kind of wide-eyed look, that chameleon. Yeah, I don't you know. find that attractive at all. <laughs> Uma Thurman is she's pretty though. Yeah. See? Yeah, there you go. I found Uma Thurman more attractive than Man, I did. Fucking <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. There is never a single person that thinks I Uma Thurman is better than Christina Aguilera. I did. Her and Kill Bill, bro. I thought she was hot, bro. Like. Edric, get the fuck out of here. You're never back. You're never allowed back on this podcast. You're telling me right now that Uma yeah. Thurman is in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Welcome. Pia. <laughs> if you've never heard of this podcast before, it's literally about anything and everything. I'm your host, David So. And then we have my co-host for today, Edric. Also known as Ed Two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I almost don't, said Ed Park. Don't, don't get it confused, bro. Don't <laughs> get it confused. Thank you, dude. You know what I've been watching, dude? What? Have you seen the? Um, <laughs> I just been watching a lot of bullshit documentaries, but one that really got me was fucking that Britney Spears documentary. I I, I know of it. I haven't watched it. Yeah, bro, it's fucking nuts. No, there's so many things I didn't know about Britney Spears mm -hmm. just because at a young age I was too busy jacking off to her. <laughs> <laughs> real, I, hey, real shit, bro. At that time, when at, at the peak of her popularity, or whatever, I did not find her attractive. I didn't get it. Really? Yeah. Like everybody, you know, when we're in school, everyone's like, oh, Britney Spears is so hot. So I'm like, dude, she's not hot. You know what it was? Yeah. It was her sex appeal, though. Cause she was doing like sexy shit. Wearing the schoolgirl outfit and everything. Yeah, dude. I no, nah, there I just did not find her attractive. And look, bro, Fucking I was right. <laughs> right? Because who looks at Britney now and, and says, Oh, she's so attractive. That's different. That doesn't mean you're right then. She was perfectly fine back in the day. She was so sweet. She was this cute little country bumpkin. Oh yeah, sweet for sure. I mean, like, she definitely came off as a sweet looking girl, but I didn't look at her and like had any Sexual desires. Everybody. Or... You know what? Gay, gay boy. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, bro. I swear, bro. Like, people would say I'm fucking tripping. You know? They're like, dude, she's so fucking hot. And I'm like, nah, she's not hot, man. I thought Alyssa Milano was much hotter. Alyssa you know? Milano's fine as fuck. Yeah, she still is hot today, I feel like. You know? Yeah, but she wasn't doing the schoolgirl music video stuff with water hitting her and shit. <laughs> I was hoping I could see through that shirt so bad. <laughs> But Britney Spears was so she was. A, I didn't know she was also a Disney kid. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is with all these Dude, Disney Ryan kids? Ryan Gosling, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake—they're all born out of the fucking Disney camp. What Disney is, breed stars, bro. That's what they've done. What is that Mickey Mouse Club that people keep talking about? What it's, is that? It's shit? just. It was just like you know these uh, teenager kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just a show revolving around these kids who would just talk about shit or like you know. Yeah, it's just scripted shit. That's bullshit. Anyways. Yeah, it's stupid. But hey. It worked. <laughs> Wait, so Justin Timberlake was also a part of that Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah. Oh. I mean, look at all the stars that came out of Disney, though. You got your Miley Cyruses. You have your uh, Zendaya. Dude, right? Miley Cyrus has the ashiest vocal cords I've ever heard in my <laughs> life, dude. That girl sounds like the Kemi Mutombo. <laughs> 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 yeah she's like this is my new single i'm like yo girl what the fuck happened to your voice that fucking sound like you've been smoking three packs of cigarettes for 20 years yo for real i'm like what the fuck happened to her voice yeah her voice is super scratchy dude she needs yeah. like some lotion for them vocal yeah. cords dude yeah that shit was nuts because she, she was on the joe rogan podcast and she was talking i'm mm. like yo what 80 year old woman is this <laughs> but it was miley cyrus i yeah. think she's still in her 20s yeah I, I think so probably like late 20s or something yeah jesus yeah. man and then you had that one dude from ufc after the fight who shouted out miley did you, remember, did you see that oh yeah i yeah, love yeah. you miley. <laughs> like, and then and, and you know what though because he did that uh, it got her attention because people started talking about it mm -hmm. and now they're working on a charity together oh really yeah so it turned out to be you know he shot his shot and he didn't get maybe what he might have wanted but still they're Taking on a good you know, cost. You together. know what a deal breaker is for me, for, for me and girls? It's the way their voice sounds. Mm, for sure. For if, sure. if I don't like the way a girl's voice sounds, it's a deal breaker. I agree. 100%. It, it doesn't matter what you look like. Yeah. It doesn't matter about anything else. 100%. I, if I have to listen to that, I, I can't do it. 100%. I, there's been a handful of times before where I found the girl attractive physically, and then I hear the voice, and I said, nope. That just went. <laughs> <laughs> what did it sound like? Uh, it's different different range of stuff. I find you hot, Edric. Like uh, monotonous, like, oh, shit. like monotonous, like a robot. You know, mm. hey, hello, what are you doing? Like that type uh. of shit, or or like very high pitched and shrilling. Like, like mm. it's super fucking annoying. I hate that shit. Yeah. Hi, oh my god. Yeah. Ooh, that's shut the. F please. Yeah. Shh. 
shut your mouth yeah <laughs> shut your mouth but no yeah there, it's 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 a it's a different range of things it's not one type of voice that i don't like it's uh it's different things, and so and Britney Spears had a very sweet voice. Ah, her voice is her a, talking, I would categorize as one of the annoying ones, though. Her talking voice is yeah. nice. You know, I just like it's like that. I, nah, man, you tripping, bro? <laughs> oh, that, that was that was my that was my white trailer trash snowflake, dude. I loved her, dude. She was I, so sweet, but I like I didn't realize how much the media was giving her shit mm -hmm. because. I was super young. I was still in elementary school at the time. Yeah. So they were giving her shit about her being a bad influence to kids. They were basically, I guess in that time, it wasn't coined this, but slut shaming her. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, the length of her skirts, like parents were going yeah. after like, who are you to, you know, dance like this and make this type of music for my kids mm -hmm. or whatever, whatnot. And she's mm -hmm. like, this isn't for your kids. Yeah. This is my music. This is who I am. Yeah. Like she got crucified in the media, bro. Yeah. Even between like the the breakup after JT and her too. She got the brunt of it. Oh, know? let me tell you something about Justin Timberlake, that little fucking ramen haired fuck. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the news has been coming out after the documentary about, you know, he's not that good of a dude. He's a fucking kind of a dick. Yeah, like he didn't, they never hooked up. Mm -hmm. She, They never hooked up at all, but yeah. on Howard Stern, yeah. he was like saying, yeah, yeah, like we fucked or whatever, yeah, whatnot. Yeah. But, and he did that whole, was it Crime Me River, which was about her, mm -hmm. which till this day, I thought it was because she was a, she was a bitch. Or she cheated on him. She cheated on him, yeah. right? So that's what I assume. Yeah. And it wasn't even true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know about this, but as a young person, you're not really Googling or researching this stuff. Yeah, exactly. You kind of just go with the crowd. Yeah. And so this whole time, I thought Britney Spears cheated on him and broke his fucking heart mm -hmm. because of that music video, mm -hmm. which never fucking happened. He was just <laughs> mad because he couldn't get pussy. <laughs> he made that video because he couldn't get pussy. Yeah. What kind of spiteful shit is that, dude? Little fucking ramen hair demon fuck. Let me tell you something, Justin Timberlake. I hate your guts. And and it's no mystery then to see why she turned out the way she turned out, right? I mean, when you're getting that crucified all the fucking time. The, your boyfriend, yeah. the media. Yeah. Her fucking dad's a piece of shit. I always say, man, it's more surprising that more young stars don't go crazier, you know, or get crazy. Mm -hmm. Um even guys like Justin Bieber, I was like, well, I mean, once he started kind of going off the rails a little bit, I, I was surprised it took that long for it yeah. to happen. You know what I mean? Because, again, man, that life is not meant to be a human being's life. To be, like, under a magnifying glass constantly, all the time, be crucified for any little thing that you do, have people talk about you all the time. Especially at that age, you're you're definitely not mentally equipped to take that type oh, of for criticism. Because sure, even adults now can't take that type of criticism. We just talked about that on the last podcast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not even criticism, but adulation too. Yeah. Adoration from that many people. Masses of people saying, I love you. You got adult women saying, I love you to a 15 year old kid. That's right. I want to have your babies type shit. How do you deal if I when I'm fifth? I'm thinking when I'm 15 and I got fucking grown ass women coming up to me saying, mm -hmm. you know, they want to have my baby. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> sure. Why, why not? Yeah, it's it's nuts too. Cause when I, it's crazy how like this whole time I literally thought in that whole Justin Timberlake situation, mm -hmm. I truly believed, and I think I've told other people, it's like, oh, remember that time when fucking uh, <laughs> when Britney, Britney was cheated, being a bitch, yeah, yeah, and she fucking cheated on, and it never fucking happened. Yeah. And then on top of that, TMZ and all these tabloids, the paparazzi will not give her a fucking break. Mm -hmm. They're always on her ass. Even when she's not popping like that, they're always waiting for her to have a mental breakdown. Because that's kind of what it became, bro. Like, she became such an easy target. Like, you know, the the when she was dating... Uh, or, Kevin or with, Federline. Yeah, with Kevin Federline too, you know, in the post breakup of that one, she just kind of went off the rail, shaved her head, was looking like a mess out in public. Easy target. Yeah. Easy to... Because, one, she's a household name... I guess I don't know if I could say she's a household name today, but at least during the 2000s, like early to mid, she's definitely a household name. And then so it's easy to get those clicks, easy to get those views by just say, hey, look how crazy she is now. Look at what, what a wreck she and is And her, her shaving her head too was her idea of saying like, I'm done with this industry, mm -hmm. leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to just shave my head. And the hairstylist too wouldn't shave her head. He, just, he or she wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So she took the clippers herself and started shaving it. And that was her symbol of saying like, hey, leave me alone. I'm not this superstar anymore. Just fuck it. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Yeah. But it wasn't enough. And there was even a point too where people were criticizing her about 
um, I, she was like trying to run away from the paparazzi, and so she had her kid in her lap because she just wanted to get out of there. Yeah. And then the whole tap is she a fit mother? Right. You know, she endangered her child. It's like fuck, dude. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> she can't catch a fucking yeah. break. She's the one. She's trying to flee this scene because people won't stop breathing down her fucking neck. And it's not like it's the best. It's it's paparazzi. Like these guys mm -hmm. are trash. Like mm -hmm. paparazzi is fucking trash. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what you say. They're like, oh, we're just trying to make a fucking. You can make a fucking living doing something else. You piece of shit. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and she just wanted to just. I think because she is from such a small town too and she is that country bumpkin she has like small town vibes to her mm -hmm. so she doesn't know how to deal with this stuff yeah you know obviously she was a, you know a disney kid and she was kind of propped up to be a star but she still has wants of a regular of a regular small town girl she wants a family she wants a kid she wants a quiet life too but that's the thing about being in entertainment you don't get to pick and choose that stuff but here's the thing though again i think a lot of it has to do with her kind of like her name value and um, how much people know her because you can just as easily talk about people like Roman Polanski or like Kevin Spacey who are kind of like big names in the Hollywood uh, arena mm -hmm. but then like after all those things that they did came to light right like Roman Polanski I mean this is some dating back to the fucking 80s and then he left the country and was living abroad yet None of it was, he, he didn't have to pay the price for anything that he did, but people still let him create his art and continue yeah. to let yeah. him do it. But he was completely out of the public eye, mm -hmm. right? Guy like Kevin Spacey too. Even Louis C.K., we just talked about him. After all of that shit came to light, okay, how come you're not seeing him in the headlines all the time and him being out there? Is it because, you know, he's just that good at staying away from all of that? Does he have a great publicist? Or is it just... Eh, his name's just not really worth it to like bring to attention like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but Britney, on the other hand, ooh, that's sizzling, you know? I mean, she had a big resurgence too because remember out of nowhere, she kind of cleaned herself up and she mm. looked like the old Britney. Mm, and, still not attractive, but... <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, dude. You a fucking hater, bro. Let me tell you something, man. You tell that to my 800 faps <laughs> when I was like a 10-year-old. I'm not saying anything about her as a person. I'm just saying I didn't personally find her attractive. Well, okay. Well, like, yeah. if, from an objective point of view, if uh -huh. we're talking about physically, uh -huh. yeah, there's definitely a lot of people who are, you know, just from ob objectively, physically more attractive. Yeah, yeah. But she has a very special place in my heart. That is Britney Spears, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's it, Britney, bitch. Yeah, and she got her residency in Vegas, so she was making some good money 50 from that. Million yeah. Around there. Yeah. And then there's like this huge part of that doc too, which I didn't fucking know about. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm very distant from a lot of these celebrity drama type of stuff. But her father has something legally where she, he is basically the carer of her. All over her money, everything else goes through him. Oh, what the fuck? So she doesn't see a dime or a cent or anything. Uh -huh. So she gets an allowance based on what her father chooses what to give hell? her. What the hell? So what, I don't remember what it's specifically called, and I'll put it into the video later mm -hmm. on. But he has like this legal ownership basically of her. Mm -hmm. So whatever moves that she makes, anything that she has to sign legally or whatever, whatnot, she isn't like a sole entity. It ha Her father has to do it. Mm. So she can't control her own money. Yeah. She can't control her own life. Yeah. And so as of right now, she's trying to get out of it. Here's the problem though. With that thing that she signed that kind of gave her father the, the rights over her whole fucking life. Yeah. Once you sign it, you can't petition to come out of it because you're not considered a sane person to make that choice. Whoa. So this is this only happens when you're assessed as somebody who can't take care of themselves. Yeah. So when she took that residency in Vegas, it's like $50 million. It didn't go to her. It went to her dad. Uh -huh. And mind you, her father was not around for her. He was uh -huh. a piece of shit. Yeah, he just popped back in when exactly. she blowing up. And so everybody that was around her, there was somebody that when she was younger and she was touring around, um, her mom had like a, a hired this guy lady who's kind of like... Um, I wouldn't say she's more than just a personal assistant, right? Mm -hmm. She was a nanny, kind of like her second mom. And even she mentioned, she goes... The only thing that I remember her father saying was, Brittany is going to make me a lot of money. Mm. And she goes, I'll just leave it at that. That's the only thing I remember about him when he said anything positive about fucking her. Fucking scumbag. He's a fucking scumbag. Yeah. And as of right now, he has a control of her whole fucking life and money. And he won't give it up. He won't Why give would it he? If that's his, if that's his uh, intention from the beginning, is just to milk that fucking cash cow. He's like, yeah. No, you're you're not fit. You're yeah, not, you can't take care of yourself. I'm gonna take care. And of he's you. saying it's for the benefit of her. It's like, bro, you were never around for her. 
Now, was Britney in the documentary herself and spoke personally about it, or was this just uh, accounts? There, there have been accounts. Well, it's it's stories, but it's also excerpts of her saying this verbally. Okay. And, and there has been written documents of her saying she doesn't feel safe around her father mm -hmm. and everything else, because she's as of right now she's trying to fight for it. Because mm -hmm. Britney still has a lot of hardcore fans, and they're actually doing marches for her or whatever, and she's written down that she doesn't feel safe around him, that she feels like she's trapped, that she can't do anything, and she wants to get out of this. But legally, she can't because she's bound to whatever she wrote. That's a sad, sad fucking situation, man, to have your own father, you know? Let me tell you who I like more than Britney, though. Christina Aguilera, dude. Really? God damn it, dude. You and you... <laughs> let me tell you, I don't... Listen, I don't even like white girls like that, yeah. but Christina Aguilera is Mexican, all uh -huh, right? She's like, she's like 12... Two, like 12 eighths Mexican or something. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck. One eighths... Mexican or some shit like I, that. She was talented. She could sing, but I never found her attractive either. Even even in, when she came back all dirty and nasty with the water scene and stuff. Uh, and Damn, bro. Maybe yeah, you, I was, just, I was maybe just, you like, just like dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just might like dick. How could you? I've never... Christina Aguilera? No, no, I didn't find her attractive Genie either. in a bottle? I mean, look, I like I said, I, I respected her talent. Man, I thought she was a good up. singer. I'm about to look up a deep fake of Christina Aguilera. You tell me right now that that's not worth it. <laughs> She looked like a sexy, dirty Johnny Depp. <laughs> Maybe in my mind it was a lot better than I thought. She kind of just looks like Johnny Depp here. <laughs> you, you, you like that? Pirates of the Caribbean yeah, stuff. What like happened? That? My Maybe my memory's all fucked up. What's going on yeah, here? You like that one? <laughs> I didn't find Hey, she kind of... This... She got implants. That don't mean shit. What they got to do with her being hot or not? She she has like the, the Marilyn Monroe look right here, dude. Nah, bro. No, she does. I mean, she's trying to emulate the Marilyn Monroe look, but and she looked good, dude. Nah, I never, I never found her attractive. Bro. Okay, fine. Let me yeah. put, give you a scenario. Yeah. All right, you're in your apartment right now. Uh -huh. It's late at night. You're a little drunk. This is mm -hmm. the first time you drink in years. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. You uh -huh. see this photo yeah. of Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Not photo. She is yeah. laying in bed like this, and yeah. you go, yuck. No, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not saying I find her disgusting. That's that's a that's a completely extreme yeah, jump there. I'm just saying she is not somebody who I would typically find attractive. Like look at a person like that and think, oh yeah, she's very. Are you crazy, dude? She she fucking bad. Christina Aguilera is bad. <laughs> this is like what eight years ago or something like that. I don't know. I mean, she's a mother now. You know, she got a little miles on her, but she's still a baddie to me. Mm. Bro, come on, man. Christina Aguilera, man. Hey. Britney Spears, I understand, you know. <laughs> no, now you're agreeing with Britney, Brit Spears. Britney Spears. her eyes are a little far apart. You know, she got that salamander hey, but, look to her. But, but the thing is, some people find that beautiful to have. It's an exotic look. You know, a lot of models. Exotic. What was it? Uma Thurman also has that kind of wide-eyed look, that chameleon. Yeah, I don't you know. find that attractive at all. <laughs> Uma Thurman, is, she's pretty, though. Yeah. See? Yeah, there you go. I found Uma Thurman more attractive than man, I did. you fucking <laughs> Hold on, hold on a second. There is never a single person that thinks Uma Thurman is better than Christina Aguilera. I did. Her and Kill Bill, bro? I thought she was hot, bro. Like, Andrew, get the fuck out of here. You're never back. You're never allowed back on this pod. You're telling me right now that Uma yeah. Thurman is yeah. more attractive than Christina Aguilera. During that time, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you should sit down. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I thought so. I. Yeah. I can't even okay, wrap okay. my head again at, at that time. Kristen Crook, I found her more well, attractive. Kristen Crook, she's super cute. Yeah, she is super cute and pretty. Christina you know, Aguilar. yeah. Oh, I got one. Um, Uma Thurman, dude. Who what else? Was a, what was her you name? Thought China was bad. <laughs> 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 China <laughs> from WWE. Rest in peace. I love you. <laughs> oh fuck, that made me choke, bro. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm not saying Uma Thurman is not pretty. Uma <clears throat> Thurman is really pretty, but Christina China, Aguilera got the curves. <laughs> hey, oh, rest shit. in peace, man. Yeah. Christina Aguilera had curves, and she had vocals. She could sing like a motherfucker. Oh no, she no no. Okay, okay. Here's the thing. Here's 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 the fallacy in your in your memory right now. Mm -hmm. You think Christina Aguilera had curves? Look at when she debuted. Those curves came later on, bro. 
She didn't have those curves when she came out. I mean, she was she was very petite when she came out. Definitely a young Uma Thurman. It's very pretty. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Her and Kill Bill was fu- she was hot, bro. Yeah, very kill. attractive. What was what was the hot part where she fucking had blood and everything around Dude, her just face? Just her badass character, man. I'm not talking you know? about her character. I'm talking yeah. about the physical shit that you jack off to. How mm. fucking dare you, mm. Uma Thurman? Oh. I'm f- Okay, let me tell you this. Hey, you just like that. You just like that. <laughs> She's very pretty. She's yeah. very like. She yeah. looks like she look could at be- her. Look, look at her body. She was stacked too, bro. Uma Thurman. Dude, hey, check it out and tell me that I I'm tripping. I think Uma Thurman looks like you naked. What are you talking about? I thought she. Was- tell, tell me she does not have a nice body. Uma Thurman body. Body. Yeah, young Uma Thurman body. I can't believe you're having this conversation with you right now, man. Hey, but the, the, I'm, you, you're not gonna say I'm wrong. I tell you that. Oh, she had a nice. <laughs> so, see, that's what I'm saying, bro. But what was this, I, dude? So, I'm telling you, bro. She's hot, man. I'm not tripping, man. Scarlett Johansson, hot or not? Oh, for sure, for sure. You Scarlett are- Johansson, like I've been a fan of her since Lost in Translation. I mean, people who know me know that that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, that's when I first saw her, and I was like, dude, she's so pretty. You know what I mean? And then she became hot. She went from pretty to like got hot. I mean, come on, that infamous red dress. You know what I mean on the red carpet. That mm-hmm. was like that was the peak of of Scarlett Johansson. Not to mention, I love her fucking husky voice. Like that that. Oh, you like that? I like Miley that. Cyrus. It's sexy. Oh, what is my, what is no, Miley it Cyrus? ain't Miley Cyrus, bro. <laughs> it's there's a there's a difference between uh you know Miley Cyrus and the Scarlett oh, Johansson. I'll, I'll show you husky, dude. I'll show you fucking Dikembe Mutombo, Miley Cyrus voice. <laughs> But see, if you get to the bone. <laughs> no, my tumble. His is like, dude, his is like super scratchy. It's just like, he just sounds like he needs a glass of water. Yeah, he needs, he sounds like he needs to clear his throat constantly. Like, bro, you need to swallow Vaseline. You need to smooth the, those fucking vocal cords of yours. Damn. But, Christina Aguilera before was different, huh? That's what I'm saying. Dude, that's what I'm saying, man. No, but the you one- had, you, you know what it was, bro? You had the fucking teenage think with the small head vision. You know, this is the one what, that I like. This is the version that I enjoy. Okay. She's bad as fuck. So, but that I'm saying came later on. That came later on, bro. Fine. I'm talking about Uma Thurman at her best and Christina Aguilera at her best. I still think Uma Thurman looked better. You know, that's that's just. Hey, you saw what Uma Thurman looked like right hey, now. Uma Thurman's fine. I think she's really, really pretty. Yeah. But Christina Aguilera's. Look, I'm not saying that she's an ugly person or anything you like that. You said that Christina Aguilera is ugly, and what you said that you said that Britney Spears that deserves everything that she got. It's recorded on this podcast, dude. <laughs> that, How those fucking words dare you? have not come out of my mouth at those all. Those two were iconic. They were always it was they were. Christina Aguilera or Britney Spears. I will say they this were. Though, I definitely preferred Christina Aguilera more than I preferred Britney Spears. Yeah, and and look, man, at the time I caught a lot of flack for saying that shit by saying that I didn't find them attractive. It, it was like like fucking you know, just the worst thing I could possibly say to say that, oh, I don't find them attractive. And it wasn't like I was trying to be, you know, all fucking uh, different from whatever, but I just looked at them. I'm like, dude, I don't see why you guys think they're so fucking hot. Like, I can understand people find that look attractive, but like to the point where like, oh my fucking God, they're like the hottest girls in, in the world. I'm like, no. That is fucking pretty though, man. Hey, even fucking Monica Bellucci at the time, at that time period was fucking fire. I don't remember what Monica Bellucci looks oh, like. Oh, bro. Monica Bellucci, even in the Matrix days, she was f- so hot, bro. Oh, Monica Bellucci is different, dude. She looks like, uh, she's like a, a one in the million type dude, of look. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's how people were talking about these Britney Spears well, and not, Christina um, they're, Aguilera. They're not, they're like, not, They're not in like the Monica Bellucci <laughs> hotness, right? Because she's, Monica Bellucci looks like an artwork piece. Yeah, she does. Right? Yeah. She's like, she's like, um, uh, what's her face? fucking blood vial lady angelina what? jolie oh see oh that's a good name yeah angelina jolie during that period too i thought she was super fine what, we're, okay we're now we're now we're deviating all right we're talking <laughs> we're not de- we are deviating we're talking about who we we're found deviating. attractive at the time I, i'm talking about pop icon idols in this realm because mm. clearly yeah. just just from an objective like just artistic beauty look uh-huh. there's a a ton more. Monica right, Bellucci, you know what, bro? Angelina Jolie. I, I found Jessica Simpson to be hotter than both those two. <laughs> yeah. I found Jessica, Jessica Simpson hotter than both of them. Yeah, but she has an anus on her face, though. So I was like, <laughs> that's the part that threw me off. <laughs> Jessica Simpson was a baddie, too. She but had that rack. 
until until fucking she had the reality TV show, and I found uh, out how dumb she was, <laughs> and that shit broke my fucking heart, dude. You gotta wonder though, like how much of it was scripted, how much of it was really her? Because come on, man, we all know at this point we didn't know probably at that time, but we all know at this point that so much of the reality shit is scripted, and it's like they're playing to. A oh, certain, there's definitely a lot you know of scripted I mean? shit, but when she said uh, she couldn't figure out why chicken of the sea didn't have chicken in it, I was like, that's her. That that's a hundred percent her. Yeah, I'm like you, you, you pretty. <laughs> then we're just gonna leave it at that. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. I can't believe you're the only person I know that at that time and at that mm. age didn't mm. find Christina yeah, Aguilera dude. or I did not. Britney Spears attractive. Like people got mad at me because I would say that shit. You didn't get caught up in the voodoo. Nah, I did not get it caught up in the voodoo. Then who bro. would you who would you compare them to at the time then, in terms of like a music person? <clears throat> um, I think at that time. Well, a little before, I guess, that time, I found Aaliyah hot, you know? Well, Aaliyah's, yeah. Aaliyah's something else. Yeah. I thought I thought she looked really pretty. Um, and look, Aaliyah was also very petite, too. But she just kind of had... Oh, it's like the had, whole vibe, you know what I mean? She had that rubber band around her waist. Dude, yeah. Like, that, just that confidence and, like, she that kind of low-key mysteriousness, that the vibe that she had. Uh, the whole thing was sexy. Um, let me think. Who else? I mean, I can't. I can't really remember who was popping at that. Missy time. Elliott. <laughs> Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. Yo, Missy Elliott kind of cute now. <laughs> Come on, bro. You want to talk shit about me, me and my taste right now? You just said you think Missy Elliott's kind of cute right now, man. Look, hey, man. None, 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 that's not a t- take away from her talent, bro. But a G is definitely not somebody I found attractive. Oh man, Missy Elliott, come on, bro. Come on, bro. The audacity to throw that name into the mix right now. Oh, that's just too fucking funny, man. No, but who who else was uh, who was who else was really popular at the time? Like that whole Britney era. In Sync was popular at the. I'm trying to remember like the, the groups man. and. Well, that was what early two thousands, right? Yeah, early two thousands. Um, I think that was at two thousand actually. The whole Y two K period. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> there was um, female pop idols. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, in two thousand. Stacy Oracle. Who the fuck is that? Oh, Shakira. Shakira. Yeah, Shakira. Bad. Shakira. She was. She. She was like one of those. Well, okay. I. I found Shakira to be attractive, but I thought she's way oh. too crazy. Like. I was like, whoa, man, that that energy is like, you need to bring it down a, a few notches. Hey, don't you talk shit about Shakira, dude. Shakira is undeniably <laughs> fine as fuck. She is. She's she is. 40 now. She's still fine as fuck. She's oh, J-Lo. J-Lo, yes. She had, I mean, the fat ass, bro. And, and, J-Lo's you know, still fine as fuck, she man. Is. She's How old still, is she? She's like in her 40s, isn't she? Oh, I'm sure she's like 50 by now. Oh, is you know? she? Yeah, maybe, maybe like late 40s. But yeah, J-Lo was around it. See, that's what I'm saying. There's like all these other people that... <gasps> Jennifer Lopez is 51 years old. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. What kind of fucking person is 51 and looks like that? <laughs> uh, a celebrity who has the money to fucking Dude, I look take older care of her. themselves. What the fuck? Yeah. She looks so good. Yeah, but that that's also a lot of makeup too. If you look at a lot of these stars without the makeup, yes, they do get all that fucking skincare and Botox and everything to stay looking rejuvenated and young. But then makeup game is, is a big if she's part doing of it. Botox, she does it very well and very subtly. Very nice. All of those stars. Bro. There's no way, bro, you could be 50 years old and not have wrinkles or, or like not have that many defined wrinkles. There's just no way. You That's know? true. Yeah, it's just it's father time always wins. Well, man. just to let you know, I have zero respect for you now. And then, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, bro? You you agreed with me on everything nah, I said. I, I don't agree with you. And this. then you threw fucking Missy nah. Elliott into the fucking nah, head. You, like, you said something bad about Shakira, on, and, I, and I love Shakira. I, I could, didn't say I didn't say anything negative about her. I said she's I'm hot. Saying, I, I will lose forty pounds for Shakira right now. <laughs> and she was like, David, oh, I want you to lose weight. I'd be like, I do it. <laughs> What well, name another one hello, that was hello. around around that time? There, I know there's more. There's more, but J Lo is definitely. She, I mean, she's just classically hot, even yeah. as fifty one. Yeah, I would prefer J Lo over a majillion people. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying, bro. That, that my point exactly, man, is like there were so many more uh, stars that I found attractive. But Christina Aguilera was up there for me, though, man. Oh, she's she? bad, dude. Especially the but, implants. But but she was more cute when she came out, like Britney. Yeah, and I, then I, she took that, you know, the Johnny Depp turn. Yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, when I saw that, photo, I was like, "That's not what I remembered." Yeah, 
All right, let's get into this right there. We'll get into the... <laughs> not that I lost respect for him. Um, we'll talk about... So on today's genius suggestions, right? We're calling them suggestions because if you call it advice, apparently you get into some legal trouble. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard, I heard about that. Like if you if you give somebody uns- unsolicited advice yeah. and they, uh, they take it, uh-huh. and some shit can happen to you. So they're called genius suggestions. What? Yeah. Now, now, fucking even giving advice can get you in legal trouble. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm giving you fucking financial advice or. Mm-hmm. Okay, you gotta be careful. So, okay, here we go. Uh, hey, David, I would like to stay anonymous, please. And I'm so sorry if it's long, but there's a lot that I need help with. My girlfriend of four years and I broke up due to my time commitment issues, and I still don't know how to make time, nor do I know why she was able to break up so easily. What do you look like? Show me a photo. <laughs> Some backstory for context. She and I got together in grade 11 of high school and attended the same university. We were in the major we were in the same major up until winter of last year. I am majoring in biology, working a part-time job and working with seniors at a senior care facility in my city. Oh, okay, dude. You're sweet. Okay. <laughs> my, I guess, ex now girlfriend is majoring in computer science and does not have a job at the moment. Interesting. Got a basher a little bit. We, <laughs> we, basically a bum. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here working two jobs yeah. and I'd be helping old people. She only comp sci and yeah. she don't help nobody. <laughs> we are both from religious conservative households that aren't open to dating. I am the firstborn of my house and the only son while she is the youngest of the house with an older sister. Very good context, guy. What happened? Due to my busy schedule and the workload of being a full-time biology student, I'm busy most of the week. Our COVID restrictions made it hard for me to be able to hang out with my with friends and ex-girlfriend as often as I used to. When the restrictions were lowered early fall, I wouldn't be able to hang out as much because my mom is a two-time cancer survivor and falls under the high-risk people's category. Damn, bro. This guy fucking really stacking himself to it. I know. <laughs> you know? When I fell over, I stood up for my nine-inch dong that kind of just, <laughs> that, that was a tripod. Yeah. Because of this, my ex and I would be able to hang out less and less. This was annoying to her because she doesn't have friends that she hangs out with other than me. And the only person she talks to are guys that have previously been into her, been into her, and she keeps around because they're chill. I know it's weird, and I brought it up to her, but she cried, so... <laughs> that's it that's all it took bro since i <laughs> since i live with my mom dad and little sister they usually drag me out on the weekends to drive around and play board games at home just to keep things normal in these uncertain times anyways this problem would present itself often that i couldn't hang out with her as much as i used to she would she would uh, scream and also give me one word text or the shrug emoji when i try to talk to her damn this is hell long let's skip along <laughs> because of the heightened restrictions so she said that uh let's see Every time we try to fix things, she'd agree that the solution was okay at the moment, but then come back with it three weeks later saying that she wasn't happy with it. This all culminated to about five days ago when she blew up on me for the last time. A few days before, we had talked about going out to possibly pick up some food and eat it together outside somewhere. The day we broke up was going fine, and I was talking about one day living with her because I see a future with her. She agreed and said that she loved me. We started talking at night about random things when the topic of our possible hangout came up. I let her know that my parents said no. I'm brown and live with my parents. They control my social life. Oh, hijo de la chingada. <laughs> because of the heightened restrictions and all. She said that they were crazy and too controlling and started to get angry and bitter. I told her that maybe we can figure it out an alternative. And she says she has an alternative, but she shouldn't put have to put any effort into me if I can't even stand up to my parents. I told her she was acting like a kid and we could never figure everything out if she'd tell me the alternative, but she refused. She asked why I couldn't hang and I told her what our restrictions are. Which don't allow people, uh, which don't allow people of different households to meet. She said that I always make her feel stupid, which confused me because those were the rules. She said she was fed up and brought up that I that I shouldn't be mad either if she talks to the guy she likes, which came out of left fe- left field. I told her that attacks are childlike, to which she said I'm an asshole and said we're done. Uh, let's go straight to the point. To me, it feels like she was disingenuous about our love and the way she talked to me makes it sounds like I was evil. Sorry for how long this is again. But I really don't know how to make more time for someone. Explain to them that when I can't and be <clears throat> when I can't when I can't get over a four year relationship that I saw as a potential high school sweetheart story. Man, that's so much to unpack, bro. Number mm-hmm. one, let's talk about this shit. Hmm. It's that it's that uh, good old 
high school college drama that you think is so complicated at the time but you look back on it and it's so easy it's so simple dude <laughs> it's hard to say this right just because obviously like i'm older than you but i've talked about the story a thousand times on this podcast but when i first got when i first had my uh, ankle holding crying story <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have this idea of what we think is perfect, right? We always, ha if you guys watch that one movie called 500 Days of Summer, it's, it's such a good depiction of um, childlike love. Mm. It's where you can only pick and choose everything that's right about a relationship that you're trying to keep together and you specifically ignore everything that's wrong, right? And but the thing that you're ending with this email was fascinating because you're saying to yourself, well, how do I learn how to make time for somebody, right? It's like, I don't think you had an issue of making time. You two are just very, very different people. Yeah. You guys have a very, very different uh, definition of what quality time is. Well, priorities are different. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like maturity level is different. Uh, viewpoint on life is different. Like for him, family values, like progressing himself. Uh, volunteering, those are all things he values and puts and in, invests his time into and energy into. But then for her, it's just like me, me, me. Like, come on, bro. Like, she's the only friends that she keeps around are guys that were into her. That should give you a fucking red flag right there. That alone is enough <laughs> no. to be like, nope. So let me tell you, bro, you dodged the bullet. You fucking dodged the bullet. And I know four years, I mean, you guys are high school sweethearts technically and and you got into college and started dating whatever so mm -hmm. it's it is a long-term relationship but you also young as fuck man but this, but also this young girl seems like and i, and I want to say that she'll be like this for a very long time because i've i've met girls like this it's the one who digs their fucking claws into yep. the, the clean kind exactly you know? so she needs somebody who can only devote their time specifically to her mm. the reason why she has those other guys around is because she needs that attention if she's not going to get it from you she'll make sure she yep. gets it from somebody else because yep. my first girlfriend was like that mm. she was she wanted to hang out with guys that liked her still because she was like oh we're still friends it's because she liked the attention if i didn't give that attention to her she got it from somewhere else exactly she was always feeding for it yeah right and it's, so it, yeah it's almost like um Kind of like an indirect slight at you. Oh, a hundred percent. Because out of nowhere, yeah. you guys are talking about you know spending time with each other. And she goes, "Well, I don't understand why I can't hang out with these other guys." It's like, "Yo, where the fuck did that yeah. come from, bitch?" <laughs> I know, like, what? What are you? I thought we were talking about us right now. Mm -hmm. uh, about us spending time. No, but yeah, she's she's clearly um, still childish. You know, still has a lot of growing up to do. And um, I don't know if her tendencies of like being the way she is will ever really change in terms of like her being selfish in a relationship, like basically wanting the attention on her. Um, and I mean, if there's, there's a lot of girls like that too. Like and there's even guys like that where they get overly possessive yeah, and guys yeah. tend to be a little more aggressive than mm -hmm. that. When a girl does that, I feel it's their constant need of attention. Mm -hmm. And number one, I'll say this a million times on this podcast over and over again. If this topic comes up again, don't you ever fucking get with somebody that doesn't have friends. Yeah, for sure. For don't, damn sure. Don't even make friends with people who don't have friends. <laughs> no, no, that's a little different. Some people, yeah. you know, they're in bad situations. But if yeah. you're with the girl who says that she can't get along with anybody or you're with the guy that has absolutely no friends. That should be a warning sign right there. It's a huge warning sign. And then you also have to understand that the type of responsibility it takes to be with somebody like that. Great example is like I know a couple that's doing really well right now. They're a really good couple. They, mm. they're, they're super dope. But... The guy in the relationship doesn't really have any personal friends. Mm. So whenever she goes out or she does stuff without him, he always feels that feeling of FOMO. He he gets sad. He might be a little moody. His mm -hmm. his uh, aggression might come out in... That's so unhealthy. In like the mood or whatever, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and on her part too, she goes, well, I don't understand. It's like, well, number one, you knew this about him when you got with him, right? He doesn't have any friends. And in fact, when I went uh, to their wedding... um. Everybody that was his best men or groomsmen were from people that he met through his girlfriend or his wife now. Oh, really? Okay. Right? So he doesn't, where is his friends from his yeah. ex 30 something years of living? Where, where are his fucking friends? He doesn't have any friends. His only friend, his best friend, his confidant is his wife. And that's it. And so what she was started to find out too in, in their personal relationship was she wanted to do stuff that, um, that didn't involve him. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> the funny thing was like we had like a, a heart to heart and a, and a and a reality check for her was 
she wanted to go into uh, entertainment. And I'm like, you can't get into entertainment if you haven't even had a discussion with your husband. Mm. And she's like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, number one, you're already busy enough as it is. You're you're a mother, right? Not saying that just because you're a parent, like you can't you can't go into entertainment or acting or whatever. Yeah. But you're also not understanding this other person that's involved with you right now. Mm. I was like, did you, let's just call him Peter. I was like, did you call, did you at, did you tell Peter that you have ideas of wanting to be an actor, actress and a singer or whatever? Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, he's always supportive of every, everything I do. I was like, no, no, no. He's supportive of everything you, that you do that involves him, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is something that you're going to do on your own. I was like, I yeah. know for a fact, Peter is the jealous type, not where he's aggressive or mean or anything, but it hurts his feelings. Like yeah, he gets yeah, sad. Yeah. He is the jealous type. He likes to do things with you. He wants to know where you're at all the time. I was like, let's say you're an actress, right? You're gonna be an actress. Is he okay with you doing scenes where you're making out with another guy? Mm -hmm. Is he okay with you coming late from um, doing uh, self tapes and auditions, uh, doing uh, acting classes and doing all the, is he always going to be there? Because I guarantee you, he's not gonna be okay with it because I know him personally. And you didn't even discuss that with him. Mm -hmm. And so for her, she kind of made a misstep in assuming that, because everything was fine, they don't argue that much, but she kind of assumed that he was going to change for her later on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, that's not gonna happen. He's somebody that was secure with who he was. You're his best friend. You guys spend all your guys' time together and that's how he sees life. Once you start removing yourself, he feels really fucking uncomfortable because now he feels left out. He feels unloved. He feels unprotected and he feels unsure. Yeah, he has he has some shit to unpack inside of him. That's for damn sure. Yeah. You know that that's for damn sure. That 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 issue is uh, it goes deeper than just their relationship. Um, but yeah, that that's the thing in a relationship dynamic is that there needs to be balance with things, just like in anything else in life, right? Balance is is always elusive. You know, mm -hmm. you're always trying to achieve it, but it's like chasing perfection. You're never gonna achieve it. Every time you think you're close to it or have it, it's 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 not there. Um, and so if the balance does not exist in a relationship, especially when it comes to like how time is managed and, and how time, how much time gets invested into each other and to your personal part of your lives, there is going to be, you know, a problem and it's going to lead to arguments. It's going to lead to somebody being happy, unhappy, both people being unhappy. And it sounds like in this case, they don't value the same things, right? I mean, he values community work. He values school. He values his job. He values his family time. And then within all of that, he's trying to balance it also by giving his girlfriend time. And, you know, we're working with kind of incomplete information here because we don't know how much time they were spending on a daily or weekly basis. If they like talk on the phone every day, whatever, because there are ways to kind of, you know, if you don't have enough time in a day to figure out how to make time, but then it's never going to be enough for somebody like that. Yeah, and also too, something that's very important when you when you're looking for long term relationships, it's kind of figuring out what what deal breakers are for you. Because mm -hmm. if for you, if family is very important for you, and for her, it's like, well, you need to learn how to stand up to them yeah. because what's standing up to them is very odd because he already kind of laid out, and I'm pretty sure, hopefully, if he did this for her, like, look, my mom's a two time cancer survivor, I can't risk hanging out with you and other people and then coming back and bringing you home like that, this is very dangerous for us. So I'm trying to limit it as much as possible for the time being. And obviously that's hard because this is young love. They want to be around the people that they that they care about. And especially for her in her case, she's somebody that's very, very dependent on the person that she's with. It's not going to work out. You know, so at this point, are you, why are you, I wonder why you're questioning what can you do to spend more time? These circumstances are weird. COVID is weird. Everybody had to make an adjustment. Yep. You know, and if she's not down to ride for that, then it is what it is, bro. Yeah. Again, it's two things, maturity and selfishness. She's immature and she's selfish, mm -hmm. you know, and in a relationship, like you just said, you have to determine what it is that are deal breakers, what you find to be important. And I feel like in any relationship that is going to be successful, and I'm not just talking romantic, but just any human relationships in general, it's a two-way street, you know? You, at the very least, at the very least, the give and take has to be balanced. But mm -hmm. generally, you should have the mindset of, I want to give more than take, right? Because I love this person. I want to cultivate this relationship. I want it to grow, and I want to do what I can for this person. And if the other person has the same mindset of, I want to give more to this person than take from this person, you guys are you guys are trying to you know really keep each other fulfilled, make each other better, 
operate as a team. And that's, that's when it comes to romantic relationships, that's what it really is about, right? It's about being a team. Yeah, what would you want to be with somebody that, that weaponizes ex-boyfriends and people that liked her before? Or, or, or uses your family against you. Yeah, I don't you're, like that. Yeah, that's that, that clearly shows that she only thinks about herself. No, and, she... and maybe in time, she'll get a broader perspective on that and recognize that she was being silly. But if the maturity level there a maturity level isn't there to spark that type of thought and spark that type of um, kind of like, I guess, self reflection. It's, you can't, you can't really instill that in her, you know, yeah. even if you tell her, Hey, look at it this way. It's not your responsibility either. Yeah, it's not, it really isn't. And so it just seems like her capacity to be understanding and to be selfless is really not where he needs it to be in a relationship, in a romantic relationship. And so, like I said, you dodged the bullet, bro. Just just be glad that it's done with. Move on. You're young, man. I'm guessing what he says, 24, 23? Something like that. He's pretty young. Yeah. Early <clears> 20s, <throat> man. It's the fucking... I wish I was fucking 23, 24 again, man. That was... You just be fucking <laughs> slaying girls that look like anybody but Christina Aguilera. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no man. Britney Spears. No, no. Spears the Uma Thurmans and, you know. <laughs> you tripping, dude. You straight up tripping, man. <laughs> but yeah, that he... You should be glad. You should be glad that you're out of that situation. Cause yeah, I mean, there's, I don't, I, it. it doesn't seem like you could provide her what she needs. And she obviously doesn't have the same values as you. So, yeah. You know, don't. well, and vice versa. She's not going to be able to give what he needs. Exactly. Either. Yeah. So it is what it is, man. You guys, you get kind of caught up in that high school sweetheart thing, right? Because yeah. you have this vision of what you thought life was going to be with this very specific person. But you'll find out, especially because you're still in college, there's a whole world of new people out there. <laughs> And it's fantastic. I wasted my first first two years of college on somebody, yeah, yeah. and I wish I could get that shit back. And, and let me let me tell you a little something about expectations, young buck. You're gonna learn. <laughs> expectations equals disappointment. <laughs> Damn, That's... dude, this is the saddest podcast. Yeah. Don't you ever expect nothing from yeah. nobody. Exactly. No, God damn it. That's why the best mindset to have is hope for the best, but expect the worst. You know that. I mean, if you have, if you cover that this whole spectrum, then it's like, whatever happens is a bonus. And that, what really can, what mindset can you really have out of life other than that? The only thing that you're promised when you enter this world is that you're going to die. You're going to exit it. That's the only promise. Everything else is a bonus, man. But it's hard to internalize that idea. Cause like you, you think, oh, I, I thought I had this relationship with this person that they would do this for me. Also, nah, this you, guy has never cried over a breakup in his life. <laughs> So trust me, he's not going to understand how you feel. <laughs> I've literally seen this dude. Just tin, some, tin can right here, man. I've seen the guy run over his foot and this fool didn't flinch once. <laughs> he doesn't He doesn't fucking care. He doesn't care at all. <laughs> well, kid, I hope we helped you out. We found out a lot of new things about his hate for Britney Spears. Mm. Even though she's a broken person, he is a hateful hey, human being. <laughs> I'm not hating you know? on Britney. I, I wish, I wish uh, she improves herself or continues to be in a spot where her mental health improves and she's just in a happy place with her and her loved ones, her, her children, not her father, obviously, because he's a fucking scumbag, but any other people that she cherishes and loves, I hope they're there they're for her and she's able to find the space, man, where she can just thrive as a human being, as a person. You know, has nothing to do with me not finding her attractive. You fucking hate her. <laughs> you absolutely hate her. You can find Ed <laughs> at Ed2 and Secret Society if you guys want to cop that gear. Yes, sir. Make sure check you check it out. it out. And then on top of that, you could catch us every Thursdays and Sundays. And motherfucker, we will see you all next time. Oh, and if you guys want to lead more questions or topics or life advice or weird stories, mm -hmm. Weird stories are the best ones, and yes. weird advice is the best. Yes. Geniusbrainpodcast at gmail.com. And we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.